Hi and welcome to your second Selenium and Python tutorial. Today we're going to be actually coding in slash implementing an instance of browser automation in Selenium. So the way we're going to do this to start, we'll jump right into it. I'm assuming all of you have watched the previous tutorial and downloaded everything you need. So what we're going to say is uh, from Selenium import web driver. And so that's basically going to allow us to automate our driver from the start and access it. Um, now, depending on what you have, uh, this is the most uniform method throughout to reference and get your individual driver. So I have Phantom JS, Chrome driver, and uh, Gecko driver. So what I'm going to say is driver equals, um, we're going to say web driver dot, and then you can see all the different um, options we have right here. So we have Firefox, Internet Explorer, Opera, Phantom JS, Safari is actually supported here. I'm kind of surprised at that. Um, but what we're going to say is we're going to use Google Chrome for now. If you have any um, questions on what is basically supported here, I linked the documentation in the previous tutorial for what web drivers are supported. But as you can see here, depending on which one you want to use. It's really easy to use this method, um, so we're just going to put Chrome for this. And we have to specify the executable path as right, as well um, dictated right here. So executable underscore path equals. So for mine, I'm just going to copy it. Uh, well, I'll actually type it in by hand. So I'm going to say users, owners, um, or owner, uh, desktop and where is it it's in my python folder and web scraping sorry about this um, and drivers and finally it's chrome driver so to make sure everything's okay we're just gonna run it and look at that we launched an instance of our browser without physically doing it congratulations that's your first step so we're going to watch this for a sec um, and then X out of it. Okay. So what we want to say next is let's actually access a website. So we're going to say driver.get and we will say for now HTTP colon forward slash um, Facebook.com. And look at that. We just accessed Facebook.com. Uh, via Selenium within Python. Now, we can actually start filling out some data really quick. Um, and in my previous tutorial, I had Zach's investment research up here. So what I'm going to do is X out of this and X out of this browser. You can see how this gets pretty tedious after a while when you have to keep launching instances of your browser, which is why we're going to use PhantomJS later. It's just so much easier. But for now, um, We'll just make this a very, very simple tutorial on how to use it. So let's just make sure this all works for Apple. And boom, we have it. Now, I will quit this for a sec. And let's look at this page for a sec. Um, now we can see here we have a, a couple of uh, drop downs. We have a chart and we have all of these um, all this data right here with all these buttons to go to the next page. So let's say we theoretically want to click one of these buttons, right? Well, what we could do is let's move over to the third one, right click and inspect it. And we want to look at the name of it. So it's a class and then I believe it's called a uh, paginate or paginate. I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, but this is basically the button to go from page to page. So we found the individual element. Um, now, if we right click on this, and we can make sure it is because we can go over and highlight it. And oh look, it's the third button. We can right click and then in Chrome at least, we can hover over copy and then we can see all these options right here. We can see copy selector, copy XPath, cut element, copy element, copy outer HTML. Let's use um, XPath for a sec. Let's press copy XPath and let's go back into here and so what the xpath basically is is it's a way to uniquely identify the element um i'll copy it down and you'll be able to see it so in the entire table basically it's going to identify it so we see okay it's in data tables table zero paginate 
or page and eight, whatever it is, and then it's a span tag, and then it's a third one. So that's identifying it. You can also go by CSS selector to select it. Um, so that's copy selector. You want to typically avoid um, the XPath, uh, however. I mean, quite frankly, it's it's really a last resort. Um, this is a little more efficient to use the CSS, CSS selector. Um, XPath is probably going to be your last resort just in terms of speed. But uh, for now, let's, use, let's try both. So I'll comment both of these out. Okay. And what I'm going to say, I'm going to set a variable to it. Um, and we'll call it L or element equals. And then we're going to say driver dot find underscore. And you can see an anaconda right here provides it with a whole list of ways you can find elements. And I'm going to paste this in the script above um, all the different ways you can find an element in Selenium. Um, but let's do XPath first. Find element by XPath. And then we're going to set a variable XPath. Um, to this, so xpath equals, and then wrap it in quotes. Okay, so you know it might be a better name to call this button, call it btn. And now that we found it, we can say btn.click in Selenium to actually click it. So let's let's launch this and see if it works. See if this automated the script or uh, the browser rather. And let's see where we're at on the table. Boom, look at that. We navigated ourselves to the third tab in the table um, just by using Selenium. So you can start to see what we can do with Selenium right now. Um, some pretty simple stuff. One other thing we can do is uh, send keys as well. Uh, now the way we can do that is, again, finding the input box and inspecting the element. Um, and what we can say, we can actually bring this down um, and we see an input box and let's just copy the XPath again um, so that's what it is so let's just replace this with the old XPath and let's get rid of this and we'll say box equals driver dot find element by XPath okay so now we want to send keys um, now what we can do to do that is say box dot send underscore keys, okay? And we can send really whatever we want. So let's put a ticker in. So let's put 3M and then see what happens. The one thing we have to remember to do though is we have to always uh, submit it. So we want to say box dot submit and then we want to say, um, actually, no, I think that's it. Um, I don't think we have to put anything else after that, any other arguments so I think we just close that out and let's see when we run it what happens look at that boom um, oh I think it just reloaded itself uh, oh okay so we actually I'm sorry what we did uh, um, effectively by this is we sent the keys and submitted it. Um, I actually completely forgot about submit. So what submit does basically is it enters the keys for you. So when we send the keys, MMM, and we press enter, we're mimicking that in Selenium by saying submit. So as you can see right there, we can really do a lot just by using click and submit. Um, it, it's pretty, actually very useful as well. So one other thing we can also do is web scrape data using this um, and I think I'm gonna cut it off at this tutorial so I think this is just a basic um, overview on how to really use selenium and some of its basic features I am however going to put this at the top of the script um, in order to make sure you guys know what you're trying to find these are ways to find elements in selenium um, so I said I was going to do that before, so you can find it by ID, name, XPath, all sorts of stuff. Um, so yeah, take that with a grain of salt. So basically, I'm going to cut it off here, and in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is actually scrape some data in a loop from this. Um, so yeah, uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.